VCR party. It's Tuesday night. I'm Joe. That's Nick. That's George. And that's Steve. And here we are in the office. I'm in the office. 11,000 videos. And we got some new ones in. Check this out. Bob sent this one. Look at this title. That's the title. Wow. Will you read it, Nick? I can't Soft read it. Soft tissue mobilization for improved cardiovascular function, colon, an introduction to advanced strain and counter strain technique for the autonomic nervous system and related disorders. Volume, put it up a little bit. One dash one. So, <laughs> but you think maybe they for the spine, maybe they would shorten it? Yeah. Nope. Oh, read, wow. read it again, Nick. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think we have time because we have a special guest on. Uh, oh, I oh wait, a... let me let me show you this one too. Okay. Dave sent this one. Dave from Michigan sent fuzzy nymphs. Fuzzy nymphs. What do you think it's oh, going to be? Oh, it's uh, fly fishing. Like yeah, uh, I know. I should have covered that up. Yeah. That would have been more fun to guess what fuzzy nymphs were. I'm getting into the Thanksgiving spirit. I got two that I might play next week. I've got Making Thanksgiving Special, and this is from the makers of uh, Making Halloween Special, and I'm hopeful that uh, the woman from the uh, Dutch Oven video that we've played many times is, is in this, the how-to. Oh, Diane yeah. Thomas? Diane Thomas. <laughs> and then this is Let's Create for Thanksgiving um, with another uh, expert in holiday craft. So I'm excited to uh, tear into those. I opened up a box from Jason that was sent in March. It was buried underneath all these other boxes. I've been going through all of our, our boxes over the weekend. And uh, he sent a, a nice list and uh, this nice video autographed by like five people, but it looks like it's a one, like a one man show, but like five, <laughs> maybe he got the stage hands autographs or something. At the Polynesian palace. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, lots of nice things in the mail yeah, this week. Great. Uh, we do have a special guest tonight. Um, and by the way, it's the Philadelphia episode. So mm -hmm. we're going to be paying tribute to Philadelphia all night with videos from the city of brotherly love. And our special guest is Jake Fogelnest. And uh, he's going to be on in just a few minutes. We pre-taped with him. He's from Philly. And I feel like he was pretty nostalgic when we were showing him all these tapes. Yeah. And George is from Philly, too. So George pulled out all the big guns and a lot yeah, of stuff that he hadn't seen before. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I hope it's uh, watchable by other people. I'm sorry, enjoyable <laughs> by other people because we had we, it was just all local Philly jokes and stuff. Hopefully oh, yeah. It well, translates. Well, yeah. I'm hoping that this is like a, a series that we start doing. Like we do all the cities. Like eventually we'll do every single city. Well, next up is Boston with Steve. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Well, <laughs> but first, let's start off with the Found Footage Festival Classic. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. We talked about this one. I played a clip from it a few weeks ago. The Club, home movie from North Carolina. And just a... Uh, was it last week, two weeks ago, for our EP mode for Patreon slash Found Footage Festival members at the $10 level, you could watch us watch the club with the guy who found it. What's the best way to describe this, Joe? Um, home movie, uh, but put on public, I don't know, public access, home movie, mm -hmm. a guy uh, found a stick that he calls the club that has superpowers, uh, according to him. Yeah. And he has dedicated his life to this thing. And right. we got to see footage that we'd never seen before. Like he, he goes over to a, a, a viewer of public access, like who, somebody who saw him on public access, he goes over to that guy's house and asks some questions about it. At it's, one point he's watching It's a piece of driftwood. That yeah, it's, <laughs> he, it's a large piece of driftwood he's found that he's convinced is a prehistoric club. So it's um, incredible. Yeah, it's and absolutely at incredible. one point during the show that was actually broadcast on public access TV, uh, the guy, William, he uh, just takes a break and he just 
turns the camera on after a full day of shooting with this piece of driftwood called the club. And he's just kind of flipping around channels and talking about, I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. Religion. Just kind of, uh, just, yeah, just whatever comes to his head. Stream like there's no filter. It's just, yeah, stream of consciousness. That's what it is. So yeah. it's, it's fascinating. Here's a, a part where he's just watching TV from the club and you can watch this on our EP mode if you're, you're curious. Oh, and, and by the way, our SLP club, which you can get at foundfootagefest.com, which is our streaming service, this just posted on there as well, the whole thing without our commentary. So if you just want to watch the uninterrupted get in the zone of this guy, William, you can do that there. You should do that. You can tell when people's got more confidence in the flesh. Anything to keep our mind off the real truth. Don't never forget it. Don't never forget it. You might think I'm crazy. You might call me loony. You know, call me anything you want to. A funny skit. But my friend, watch, just keep watching and see it happen for your own eyes. Ain't even the year 2000 and y'all talk about all them millions of years, evolution junk. That don't even make no sense. And y'all getting away with it. But that's the enemy. That's how he works. And it's meant that way. But let me tell you something, Mr. Mankind. Your wisdom and your knowledge... <laughs> Stops there for a while. It's foolishness to him. So you can go on like you're going to. My friend, just wait till you really find out. Just wait till your own breath of life finds out for itself they ain't nothing you can do about it neither you might start thinking that this old boy ain't so crazy after all there's some crazy stooges you know <laughs> <laughs> But just keep watching it. He got distracted. Yeah, he got distracted by the Stooges. By the Stooges. Yeah. All uh, right, so I'm gonna stop God. it there. But. That's art. That is that is art, isn't it? Absolutely. And I remember you used to do that when we were in college, is just record flipping around the channels, and that's some of the most valuable footage we have. Oh, right now. I still have that on a tape somewhere. I should find that. Yeah, yeah. we should watch that for uh, one of our bonus episodes at some definitely, point. Definitely, definitely. I'm glad I did that. Yeah, but the club, you just you gotta see it to believe yeah. it. I think it's our most asked about video clip. Yeah, you know? so I've had a lot of conversations about that one. And we're trying to find more footage because this was like a 16 part series that the guy did. And I've, I think we've watched six parts, maybe. So, yeah. And uh, yeah. And he puts his address up in there. And we asked Skip if he actually went to check it out. He's like, no, nah, I haven't checked it out. I was like, December. I'm going to come down there and we're going to check it out. So Yeah, Skip from AV Geeks is the guy who taped that off TV or, or his friend did in uh, North Carolina. And we watched the video with him. So check that out. Are you guys curious, Steve, George? Oh, yeah, that's one of my Very favorites. much so. I want to know where your... he is now. Yeah, we do too, so we're, we're on the hunt. What's your background there, Steve? Um, well, this week, um, sell out Steve sold his background out for uh, Matt Myers' hap uh, 40th birthday. So happy 40th birthday wishes to Matt Matthew Myers. Matt Myers the cat? Uh, no. Okay. His wife, Anna, made a special birthday card that uh, she prepared for him, featuring his buddy, Fats the Cat. So this is Fats the Cat here. Oh, okay, good name. Cool. Good yeah, name. I like the font of Happy Birthday. I like the bowl of, what is that, a bowl of filth? What is that? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. Yeah. Looks like ice cream to me. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I think maybe yeah, he's a little sprig of mint there. there. Yeah. I like I'm it. pretty nice sure Fast the Cat out. is a, uh, a huge fan of Philly, so be excited to, uh, to watch the episode tonight. Before, All right. we, before we get into Philly proper, though, do you want to get in some flying windows? Do we have time oh, for that? Oh, yeah. Ben Franklin invented the flying window in 1787. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. They were analog back then. It was just carrying windows. Phil Brown sent me this on, on social media, and he said, have you seen Dial-A-Date from Toronto? I said, no. And I guess this used to air late at night on, on TV. Just somebody bought ad space for a service called Dial-A-Date, and there's flying windows in it. And I think this should be an EP mode. It's a half hour of paid for television that would air late at night in Canada. <laughs> Hey, if you're single and 
Don't touch that dial. You're about to make it hot as hell. Sexy signal. You can talk live on dial station. The hottest way to connect in the 90s. Starring the Prince of Love, Haven Bronstein. Hey, darling, come here. Come on, baby. Yeah. What does it feel like to have a baby? You put your fingers in your mouth and pull on your cheeks. Are you there? Yeah. What's so hard about that? Come now, try pulling your mouth in your hand. Featuring the dial and name Bikini Girls. With special guest say, stars, the Terminators, Linda Hamilton. I was not, I am David Bronstein, I was the not Prince expecting that at all. And if you're ready to party, take a walk on the wild side, meet some hype, sexy girls, take me with you, please take me with you. I did it so bad, I'm ready to go. But if you're staying home. All right, that's about all I can uh, muster right now. <laughs> from... No, it's flying windows. They were like dancing windows because the, the, yeah. the, the bikini girls were da- were dancing, but then also the flying windows were dancing too. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, and they kind of got to be like rhombuses and they kind of changed into diamond shapes for a while. So some real funky flying windows. Um, all right, let's get into our guest, eh? Yeah, what can we say about Jake? You've probably seen him on the I Love the 80s, I Love the 90s, but he's also a comedy writer and got his start on Squirt TV, uh, which was a public access show in New York that MTV then picked up, right? I think so. I think that's yeah. the story, yeah. So here he is, Jake Fogelnest, showing us his raviolis. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Hey, Jake. It's Jake. Hey, how are you guys? Good. It's a Philadelphia show, finally. Yes, I've been looking forward to this. I am truly honored to be here. I, I I love your your show. I love you guys. I love what you do. I've been following you for years, and I think a lot of people think you know that I am a New Yorker, like I'm a New Yorker guy. But the truth is, I live in Los Angeles, and I was born in Philadelphia, so I'm actually from Philly. And we're big fans of you, but I'm I'm a huge fan of your shirt, of oh. a Vestron video shirt. We got a <laughs> yes. Put that. Look at that. <laughs> not that not exactly. No, that's uh, it. Close to Nailed the jingle. It. I tried. I tried, but it's not even close to. Nice. Um, all right. So we put together some clips. We're gonna play for you. You sent over some clips that you suggested, and uh, let's let's dive into this. George, you want to get us started? Well, you know what? I think first we should say that Philly is one of the major media markets in the country, and so that allowed for a lot of local TV production. A lot of local commercials that are, um, they really tried hard, I guess is what, what I'm trying to say here. And and the city really in the 80s was trying to reinvent itself. And one of the clips I think that best um, explains how they were going about it is a clip that you have, Joe. Um, it's Patti LaBelle singing a song called Philadelphia Get to Know Us, which yes. it turns out was written by, I believe his name was Ed Kierhoff, the guy who last week I showed you a beer commercial and he also wrote the Price is Right theme and everything. <laughs> oh, the Whoa. kind of Moog synthesizer guy? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. Wow. Um, okay. Brought in the heavy hitters for this. Kalehoff, Kalehoff. Here's a uh, Philadelphia Get to Know Us. Always Ben Franklin. Yep. Always Rocky. Always cops. <laughs> <laughs> he shot all of them right after that. <laughs> you can't help dancing to a heartbeat and singing to our song. So you're moving to our rhythm. Who are that? You know who they are? I'm not sure. Come on along. Everybody to our party. Queen. Sure. It all seems a little bit like a Juicy Fruit commercial. That's the Hooters, <laughs> by the way. Oh, Damn right! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. J? Dr. J. Uh-oh. Who's that? I don't know who that guy is. I don't know either. <laughs> no recollection. <laughs> it is a, it's a weird it's one to go out there. on right here. Yeah. They end the video on that one. Is that a dangerous thing to do in a car? 
Well, there's a lot yeah, of that's, bad driving. That's, yeah, that, yeah, that's Philly for you, though. It's lucky. <laughs> it's lucky the commercial didn't end with like you know somebody throwing uh, uh, D batteries at a car. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's like what Philly's known for, right? I mean, like you think of the Philly sports fans and like like booing Santa when he comes out. Like that's always the, the thing known about Philadelphia. For so many things: the Liberty Bell, the Mummers, racism. <laughs> I think racism's first on that list. <laughs> Petty LaBelle. So then she has a video. When I saw that, I was like, oh, I want to play that other Petty LaBelle video. I think she did it in Washington D.C. But have you seen the one where it was on C-SPAN and she? sang uh, this Christmas for the Christmas tree lighting. Uh, I think it was in 1996. Oh, I'm, I'm going to just show a little bit of it, but look it up later. The uh, bell heads will know this, but if you're uninitiated, <laughs> I'm, you go ahead and play I'm a big, it. I'm a big C-SPAN. Uh, oh. uh, like we're, that's like my number one music source. So <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised I missed this. Like when uh, you, I, I you should... discover new music, I go to C-SPAN. Next time you're on the show, I want you to have a C-SPAN shirt on. <laughs> I would love it. Oh, I'd love a C-SPAN shirt. That All would right, be here's, great. Here's Patty LaBelle on C-SPAN uh, singing This Christmas. And uh, I just cut uh, like a minute and a half of this. But, She's uh, a Philly Phil native, I take it. Philly native. Oh, uh, yes. Philly yeah. legend. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen we, are we are privileged to have, to have as our special, special honored guest this, this evening, evening the dynamic, dynamic Patty LaBelle. LaBelle. Patty's Patty recording, recording and acting Patty career has pushed, pushed her to the, the pinnacle, pinnacle of show business. business. She came up too early. Here to sing this Christmas. You say the name at the end of the intro. Patty. Exactly. You say Everybody the name at the end. That. You don't say Patty LaBelle, but she thinks she's supposed to come out, and then you continue the intro. I, no, that's not how it works, pal. I think that that speaks to Patty LaBelle's humbleness. She was not expecting a grand speech. She mm. just thought it was going to be. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Patty LaBelle. And then you saw her go, oops, I've made an error. Yeah. And I, I will, this is, it's too much. It's well, the, this too much. whole video is a testament to Patty LaBelle and what a pro she is because her backup singers don't show up and she's singing so she can't communicate that. She has to figure out a way to communicate that to people to let them know that the background singers aren't out and to cue them to come out. So That's just crazy. Watch. You would think C-SPAN had um, like the best. <laughs> it's uh, the pageant musical. of peace for Christ's sake. I mean, yeah. come on. And by the way, it is C-SPAN too. And I'd actually rather have a C-SPAN 2 t-shirt. Yeah, 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 I would too would actually. Better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, welcome. welcome. That should be the background singers right there. Hang on the mistletoe. I'm gonna get to know you better. They're supposed to be behind her. It's Christmas. Yeah, what's Where are my background singers? Woo! <laughs> oh, baby, baby. I, and it's the wrong words on the cue cards. I don't know the song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh. I'm gonna have them all I can. I'm gonna have to have them all I can. Because I don't have the right words and I have no background singers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Woo! Oh, baby, baby, I, and this is gonna be a very, merry Christmas for you and me. <laughs> And it goes on like that for five minutes. Oh. I am begging Patty LaBelle, who, who's ever in charge of the Patty LaBelle catalog, hook up with Record Store Day. Let's do a limited edition vinyl Christmas release of that. Yes. I think we could get it to be the UK Christmas number one. Well, uh, speaking of dumb lyrics, I wanted to get into the Philadelphia Eagles did, you know, like after the Super Bowl shuffle in 1986, the charismatic Chicago Bears, Jim McMahon, the Fridge, they were a star team. The Philadelphia Eagles in 1988, two years later, made their own version of the Super Bowl shuffle with all their stars. And uh, I, I hate to say it, it doesn't quite have the same chemistry uh, that the Super Bowl shuffle did. This the doesn't slap. 
<laughs> well, not only that, but I looked up the Eagles. That's what, they, that's they what the only, kids say. <laughs> it doesn't slap, Jake. No. And, uh, <laughs> I think that that's what the kids say, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the Eagles, I looked up, they went 10 and six this season and lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Bears. Uh, <laughs> Buddy Ryan was the kind of infamous coach at the time. He was he got in trouble for like putting bounties on players and running up scores and things like that. Unsportsmanlike behavior. But this song that the Eagles put out was called Buddy he's watching nick I, I found it on the shelf oh, actually today yeah. everybody wants to sound now you see me now you don't you think you will you know you won't six wide receivers they got the names of joe but i made them all the leads i go up guys all around who's got the ball when we hit the ground but he's watching you he's watching yes he's watching and the If you don't hold the line, it's going to make us all go blind because they're wearing sunglasses and pointing to their eyes. So spared that really what it is? No expense spared. No expense on making that video. <laughs> just, oh yeah. I'm, like, I'm just of- it, that's so crazy because it's like I'm I'm wondering what the record. You know, Philadelphia has such a historical rich music tradition. Like the soul music that came out of Philadelphia. David Bowie stopped his like you know, uh, diamond dog store. And he's like, nah, I'm going to Philly. I'm making a, a soul record and doing young Americans with the, you know, the TSOP, you know, those guys. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, is that the same recording studio <laughs> where they did fame? Uh, it's possible. It could have been. George, what do you have for us? Do you pull anything up? Sure. I, um, let's see. So when, the Philly sports teams are known for their brutality, right? And and uh, I, I believe there is a court that opened in the stadium, at the Eagles Stadium, because so many people had been uh, <laughs> yes. ar- arrested during the game. This is not. This is not a joke. No, no way. No, no, no. There's yeah. yeah. There's there was a jail. I I in the stadium. I, I heard about it. <laughs> right. I think it was um, vet. It was at Veteran Stadium. Um, yeah, or, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what the deal was, but a lot of yeah. people have brought it up because of, of when they were talking about how tough Philly is over the last few weeks. Um, but anyhow, one of the other tough um, figures out of Philadelphia was the former mayor, the late former mayor, Frank Rizzo. Frank who, um, Rizzo. <laughs> right. So after he was out of office, the local news learned that the Philly police were still running errands for him, like raking his leaves. <laughs> while they were on the city payroll so a reporter confronted him while he was walking his dog and uh this is this is what oh. happened there is a stan borman from channel three news could we uh how are you fine sir how are you good can we talk with you for just a moment oh i'm busy you couldn't answer any of our questions i wouldn't talk to you under any condition why is that sir forget it scram get out of here sir i understand now that look, these... get away from me I am now a private citizen. You get away from me. We're allowed to be on the streets, sir. I don't want to talk to you. Get away from me. How do you feel about the security guards being taken off of you, sir? Get away from me or I'm going to throw you out in the middle of the street. Sir, uh, one more question. I'm telling you, get away from me. You were the symbol of law and order in Philadelphia, sir, for many years. People looked up to you and respected you. Look, creep, get out of here. How could you justify your actions at our cameras last Monday in front of your house? You're a creep. We're a member of the media. We'd like to have an answer to our question. You're a creep. 
Why did you attack our cameras? Sir? Get it all. Don't miss any of it. You're a creep. Get away from me. Would you answer the question? You know, you hide behind that press card. I'm not hiding Give behind me. anything, sir. Well, I just you, want to I'll get some answers. Do. There's a gang of you here. There's enough of you here. By myself, I'll take you physically. Well, I'm not asking I'll you go, to take me physically. Well, get away from me. Well, sir, I'm on the if public street. I should, be, I should be authorized to be here. Then... I'll break it over your head. I'll break it over your head. Get away from me, you crumb. You crumb. That's a challenge, <laughs> except I'll put my dog away, and I'll come back. And you got one, two, three. And I'll do it along with you. It's in that back of that fence. Just the three of us, four of us, me and you. I'll show you what kind of a man you are. You're less than a man. Okay? You're a crumb creep. And I wouldn't take that off for nobody. And there's three of you and I'm by myself. And when it's over, there'll be nothing to it. Win or lose, okay? But you don't have the courage. You're a real crumb bum. Put that on camera. You're a crumb bum, the three of you. And I challenge you. You're a coward. You're a yellow sneak. And if you want to... Now, what I say, let's forget all the rules of this great country we live in. I will go back to that wall with the three of you. Just me. There is a You're a here. crumb creep coward. You can't take... You, don't, you won't stand up to a I'm, sta I'm standing up. We're not here to fight. We're here to get some answers oh, to well, some questions. Answers. That's all. I want to fight you. Why is that? Because you're a crumb creep, lush coward. You don't even know me, Mayor. You are a lush. I can tell by looking at you. I was a cop all my life, and I know a lush when I see one. And you're a lush. You're going to have a hell of a story on that one. <laughs> Play every word of it, crumb. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A crumb creep. <laughs> you're yeah, scum. Why don't, why don't you go jump in a lake, pal? <laughs> Former <laughs> mayor? Former mayor. There's a huge well, mural a, of him, does, right? Does not no. There, it's that's, the statue that that gets deeply faced frequently. That's uh, the right great, in front of City Hall. That's the great mayor of Philadelphia, Frank Rizzo. Show some respect, you and, crumb bum. He's also he also starred in the Jerky Boys albums, right? He was, he, that, yeah. They did they did him. Yeah, but this is Frank Rizzo. <laughs> Didn't Maybe. realize until I I moved to the East Coast was that. Um, South Jersey Shore is a Philly haven. I didn't realize that because I, I went yes. to Ocean City and it was all Eagle stuff, all all uh, Flyers stuff. Everybody are you are you went down the shore? Yeah. So I you went I, down to shore. Yeah. I went I went down to shore, <laughs> and I've I've gone every summer since I moved to New York uh, to Ocean City. But last summer I went to Wildwoods. And, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wildwood, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Because if you want like an airbrush t shirt of like uh, the, the Philly fanatic, but he's saying like kiss my ass or something, <laughs> they'll, they'll do that for you. Yes. That airbrush shirt right there on the boardwalk. Uh, Jake, you. I don't I, know about I, this place, but I already know about this place. Yes. You know, Just based on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, let me tell you, there's. Jersey, Jersey Shore. Yeah, there's there's been progress though uh, in the uh, boardwalk T-shirt scene down there down the shore. So here's something I found. This was in Wildwoods, uh, at Wildwood, New Jersey, um, this past summer. Here, I just found this one. So I thought there's some they're making some progress. <laughs> you still have world's greatest farter, but there's also a Black Lives Matter. So that's really good. So you yeah. get like a Black Lives Matter T-shirt and maybe like you know Trans Lives Matter and yeah. then also fuck you, you fucking fuck. Yeah, you know? that's there too. Yeah, it's one, it's one stop shopping. Um, in 1994, um, two uh, women made a documentary where they talked to just mostly women and t and girls that were on the boardwalk for like uh, oh. a, a week. And I pulled some highlights from this. You got to watch it. It's on YouTube. It's just called Wildwood, New Jersey. And uh, I think most of these are Philadelphians in here because they talk about it in the documentary. So it's just fly on the wall, uh, people talking about stuff. And I think it's very Philly. So take a look. Love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's called Childwood. We call Wildwood Childwood because you can come down here and I think it's okay. It doesn't matter if you're 9, 90, or 109. Do anything you want. Nobody gives a shit. It's Nobody great. cares. No. It's like totally cool. Nobody knows you, so you can do whatever you want. I was on the go cart cart and he <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Every time I went by, and I didn't know what he was saying, so I just smiled back. And then we've been with them for three hours. And they won't leave us. <laughs> and they're nice, though. They're sweet. Then I'd rather than not be with them. Gracious. Now we like them. They're nice. And this face too. 
<laughs> look at these faces. Look at them. No, look at these faces. Yeah. Oh, the right look at happening. everybody's look at faces. faces. Aren't Why they nice? Look at their faces. <laughs> he tried to pick me up. I got she was, she and wasn't burned. Hard. Well, I came back and I. Hey, <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> but we're friends. A beer. <laughs> Later, you come over. All right, I'm coming over. Seriously. Okay. Yes, you can come up on the boardwalk and just meet somebody like that, you know, in a split second, and like. It can turn into a serious relationship, like me and Jana, because it's like different. You know, I, I met her a couple of weeks night. ago, but we hooked up tonight together, and like I'm probably gonna be with her for the rest of the summer. It's different every night. You and never know what's night, gonna happen. It's different. You can stay together forever, or it's different. Well, that's the thing with we. Yeah. Everybody's got their nails done, so I have to have mine done. You gotta be with the fling, you know? You gotta do what you gotta do. But it doesn't, and they're all fake. <laughs> they are? Yeah. There was two people just a couple weeks ago that ended up dying because they got beat up, they were drunk, they got beat up, they passed out, and they were thrown into a pool. Hello? Wildwood, New Jersey. <laughs> That's how I remember it. I yeah. have so many, so many emotions right now. Um, <laughs> first of all, in my heart, I believe that guy and Janet, they're still together. Yep. Also, <laughs> one of those clips straight up a cold open of a Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake, you'd mentioned um, several Philly jingles. And Joe is a lover of jingles, so I strung, jingles. strung a bunch of them together. And oh, uh, great commercials! But I started off with the beloved Channel Six ABC action news theme, and so they yes. just all sort of run together here. <laughs> oh. oh, classic! If you've got a passion for fashion and you've got a craving for saving, take the wheel of your automobile and swing on down to I feel fall, 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 who for the rock and the rock you got, you got. I got the rock and rock and take the walnuts. You got a gem, it's a gem, you got, you got. Gem, get at rock and take the walnuts. Who are the Nobody bakes a cake as tasty as a tasty cake. <laughs> Nobody bakes a cake as Gross. tasty as a tasty cake. Nobody bakes a cake as tasty as a tasty cake. Tasty cake. Nobody bakes a cake as tasty as a tasty cake. Now shop prices we can can selling lots of bread. I'm pumped. Ooh. I'm so pumped right Super now. Supercut. <laughs> Nailed it. I, I have a tough time uh, pinning. I mean, I've lived in New York for 20 
plus years, but, and I know the New York accent pretty well. The Philly one, I have a tough time differentiating because you have, you know, uh, Frank Rizzo, but then you have words like John. So like, what is the Philly accent? I know George, you pulled some clips for this, right? Yeah. This, it's just, it's just in the vowels of O's. Yeah. O, that's a, water. O. Yeah. Water. water. Um, um. <laughs> yeah. Here's a, the clip. The first clip is from a block party in 1983. And that's some local commercials where it just filters in. Oh boy. Okay. Al Smith. What's your name? Lisa. Okay, we just want to ask you, what do you think of this little uh, get together here today? It's jolly. It's very. It's jolly. great. It's like happening. Great. It's happening and it's jolly. All right. What kind of music do you like? Heavy metal. Van Halen. Ozzy. Sabbath. Okay. Um, well, from what we understand, um, all that kind of music is called hamburger music. What do you say to that? Who calls it hamburger music? The Clash calls it hamburger music. The well, Clash are a bunch of phony students. They're just punk rockers. And they don't even know what the hell they're playing. They play two goddamn notes, and that's all they know. They have no talent. Right. Eddie Van Halen, that is talent. Hi, my name is Michelle Larson, and I won a VCR <laughs> in the Great Movie Giveaway. We all won in the Great Movie Giveaway. Everyone's winning color TVs and VCRs in the Great Movie Giveaway. Hi, that was my Oh yeah, this girl is great. This is a... Oh, wait. Hi, that was my girlfriend Tasha. She's telling her about this guy who called me the other night. We were on that phone line. You know that fun phone line? Anyhow, he started telling me a joke. You know, I just can't stop laughing. Call 976-0300. When you're having a transmission problem, what should you really know? This is a clutch, here's the pump, or is it the torque converter? Why get frantic? Say Atlantic Transmissions. They'll show you the difference frantic. between a torque converter and a pump, the clutch, and how it operates. They have convenient locations and a nationwide warranty. So remember, when your transmission is out of commission, don't get frantic. Call Atlantic Transmissions. Atlantic Transmission, frantic. it's automatic. This is weird. I've never wanted to call a phone sex line before. Um, now, you're, now you're thinking about yeah, it. That's, really accent. Yeah, that was, uh, wow. <laughs> Oh, yes, so, it is. So the Al Albert Showcase was a show that aired for 32 years on Saturday mornings. It was like Stairway to Stardom with a bigger budget. There were high school kids, but mostly much younger kids who would sing and tell jokes. I thought it was disturbing then, but I think it's mm -hmm. even more disturbing now. So yeah. This is for you. Oh, boy. And for more of Showcase, here's... <laughs> Thank you, gang. Welcome back to Showcase. We're sitting with our teeny boppers. How about Adam? Why can't elephants go to the beach? Why don't elephants go to the beach? Why can't elephants go to the beach? I don't know why, Adam. Because their truck keeps falling down. Karen. <laughs> what do you get when you cut the gangster and a garbage man? That face. Do you know what? What do you get when you cross a gangster and a garbage man? What? Organized crime. <laughs> okay, let's go. How about <laughs> Anne Marie? Yeah. Yes? I'm glad you're an agreeable young lady. Uh, we're going to have to teach you to say no along the way, but for now, yes is a <laughs> you have a joke for me? Uh, uh. Men grow cold as girls Ow. grow old, and we all lose our charms in the end. But square cutter pear shape these rocks, then there's their shape. Diamonds are girl's best friend. Oh. <laughs> yeah. even though I know I will be far apart of you Have to think Man is a patient of the saint, Al Albert. Stop. Stop it. Sky. Stop. Will. 
<laughs> yeah. Where's this show been? Like? Nine years old. Wow. Thank you very much, and no, uh, welcome back. We're with our showstoppers. Uh, is there one place that intrigues you, uh, where in the back of your mind you say, "I gotta visit that country"? Well, I want to go to South America. I've been in about uh, four or five of the countries down there, and uh, some of them uh, leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> Thanks for that insight, Al. Jake, you got your start in, in uh, public access in, in yeah. New York, and uh, jo our own George here was on a head of show in well, what channel was it in uh, Philly? Well, channel Seven. That's what uh, that's what brought us all together here. Right. Oh my right. God! Yeah. Do you have you have Channel Seven footage? Well, so or? I I went to college in Philadelphia in '93. I didn't live in the dorm, so I didn't have cable. So I took my TV with Santana. Yes. I'm already getting a Philly accent again. Um, yeah. Just by hearing this. But uh, so I, I had the rabbit ears up and I picked up this station I'd never heard of before. Very staticky. Um, W07CB. Correct. And, uh, and Channel was, 7 TV heaven. They, there was one camera. It was they they had one consumer camcorder that po was pointed at a desk with a few people on it. And I would just it was a call in show. So I would just call in over and over again for over a year until they um, somebody called me back and said, do you want to show? And so from January to May of 1995, I was live with no delay at all for up to four hours a day. Oh my um, God. And so my brother would tape them. So I have, I've got like 10 tapes and I just cut together. This is me trying to be. I was the funny. other, I was the other kid making crank calls. Oh, well maybe, my maybe you'll you hear probably, yourself. Your paths I'm, have crossed definitely at yeah. some point. Well, you know, Skip and RJ. So let's just like, uh, right. we'll get into the whole channel seven thing. I'm dying to see this. This is going to make, blow my mind. You're watching a weekly sermon with the Reverend George Spunici. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Philadelphia, Channel 7 is back on the air. Yet again, another Friday night without a script. And you see the calls are already pouring in. What can I do? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only show on Philadelphia featuring a live human heart. We have it here. What are you going to do? You know, I, I was saying that to my, the person who mugged me last night. This truly is the city of brotherly love because he only shot me in the knees. As you can hear in the background, possibly a, a siren. Let's hope that person is okay. Let's send a warm Channel 7 welcome to whoever is lying in the back of that ambulance. There you go. 735 uh, 7775. Seven, Remember, seven. name of my barber. Win an autographed hustler if you want. Oh, is she there? No, no, I'm alone. It, I literally am running the station myself. 57775. Seven, in Philadelphia, oh, uh, Channel 7, America's finest television station, we have more quality programming. I can't do this with a straight face. No, we so we have a line up that's packed with uh, advice, some comedy, some serious notes. And some wrestling. ECW wrestling. Extreme Championship Wrestling will be on. It's incredible. It is. And it, they use chairs and sticks and anything. anything. They can. You're watching the news right now. You're not watching me. Well, you're going to switch over. You are going to switch over to Interactive 7. And if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can call us and send us a check. Or you can reach me in my private lines, 976 Booty. What do you like to say? I just wanted to call and see how you're doing. I, I'm, I'm doing, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, but uh, did you hear about the uh, latest uh, numbers on the earthquake victims? Uh, latest total, 4,500 dead. Uh, earthquake. I had a question about that earthquake. Um, let's see. When the people, because I know Japanese custom, when they go back into the rubble of their house, right. do they have to take off their shoes? Someday he's going to be in. George is okay. Oh, uh, except for the convulsions and vomiting during the show. I'm noticing there's no time delay here. That's kind of scary. Well, we just think that, you know, you're, you're, you're making a valiant effort. Yeah, thank you. Not, not necessarily succeeding, I might add. Well, we, that's why we have some advice for you. I can't believe this started as, as the wrong number, and yet, strangely, it's blossomed into womanhood. It's going to be, as the French say, really kicking. That's if they, you know, came, that's if they came to America at a young age. I don't know. I have live um, like horse inseminations TV. next week. It's my first time on live TV. What do you expect? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Look, hey, man, if it's your first time, just ease into it. Let me do it. Keep your eyes closed. No. Um, this is completely irresponsible. You realize this is just... Well, you know, this movie, it was it was really wacky. It was like the plot was crazy. It made you like... The plot was so crazy that it made you kind of scared. But 
What are you doing? To a, uh, I won't say the name, but a, but a, an all-male private school out, out on the main line. And, uh, That's weird, because I danced at an all-male private bar once. <laughs> I'd rather not discuss that period of time. I was young. The money was good. The military is one big homoerotic kind of fun club, isn't it? That's why I joined. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, if I was a porn star, my name would be Rod Sterling. Oh, yeah. Yes. What's your name? My name is uh, Joel Bachelor. Joel uh, Bachelor. <laughs> well, that sounds rather inviting. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it's my last name. Maybe you really want to be in the military. My name is My name is George Menage Trois. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You got that guy. Are you, uh, do you have anything to talk about tonight? No, I just said that. I think that O.J. Simpson's trial, I think it's a pain in the neck with him. <laughs> well, I, it was certainly a pain in the neck for Nicole Brown Simpson. Channel 7. Oh. I like to play with Bunichi. Oh, you would. And who are you? My name is Little Dong, and I like to fuck you. Hey, that's it. We're not taking calls ever again, and my life has just ended. I mean, that's... Okay. Wow. Classic public access right there. It's and on your Patreon, Old Squirt TV's clips. And oh, yeah. Episodes. So y- you get access to uh, uh, clips of Squirt TV, all, uh, full episodes as they originally aired, um, a new show each week called I Did This First, where it's basically me doing a show out of my apartment. You see a little bit of Squirt TV, and then I talk about stuff that's going on in my life now and just sort of, you know, pop culture, you know, of the moment. It's basically doing Squirt TV again. And then at, uh, like, the VIP level, I got a 24-7 legal radio station, which is basically, I'm putting my record collection on the air and broadcasting it live. Thanks for coming on. It's been fun to talk about Philly with you, and let's do it again. Honor. And uh, just know, Buddy's watching you. No, ah! always. <laughs> and so is Patty Lavelle. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I don't know if I phrased that the best, but like Steve, you probably do all the time, right? Like Steve Lawrence is probably a common. No, I get it all the time. Like, look at this. I got this email here from Deborah. Phil's 90th birthday. This has happened to you since like college, I think. All the time. Email was invented. You've gotten up emails intended for other Joe Pickett. Well, because I think Gmail will still send it to you if they get a punctuation thing wrong or if Mm. they don't include the punctuation Mm -hmm. in the email address. So uh, this has happened to me before. and It's usually boring stuff. Sometimes I respond just to confuse them. But this one, I definitely responded. It said uh, they sent something saying that Phil's turning 90. They're, they want to do a, a video hug for him. There's a website where you can like make a 60 second video and then just say, happy birthday, Phil. And uh, she said, just make a short video. It's easy to do. And she gave an example. And I was like, okay, I will do that. And oh, uh, I, ju- <laughs> I just got the oh, email boy. back. <laughs> I just got an email back. There's maybe like 30 different people on here, including me. And it worked. It totally worked. So nobody in Phil's family like knew that you you weren't the right joe pickett they're just like that must be him i feel like they must be like oh that must be like his grandson's friend who was his you know what i mean like they yeah something like that so uh (laughs) it worked very well so uh i'm pretty proud of it i didn't really do anything i didn't really say anything funny because i wanted you know i wanted to get away with it in the montage yeah but i i did use a filter for it so to kind of disguise my face and to see if anybody noticed which nobody did here's uh, phil's 90th video hug this is, what, this is the email that I got. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Hope you have a great year ahead, Uncle Phil. Happy birthday, Dad. I'm sorry we couldn't be there to be there in person, but maybe next time around. Anyway, congratulations. And like I said, have a happy birthday. Congrats. Catch you later. Bye. Happy birthday, Phil. Uh, how's it going? I uh, heard it's your birthday. Just wanted to say congrats <laughs> from all of us over here. Uh, 99 is... Quite a milestone, and I hope you enjoy yourself on this special day, and uh, make sure you don't have too much fun now. All right, thank you. Okay, happy birthday. 99. <laughs> so you got uh, an age wrong, too. Oh, yeah, I got, I, and I'd love to say that, that was intentional, but I think I accidentally <laughs> called him 99 instead of 90. Uh, 99, that's quite the milestone. <laughs> <laughs> got the chipmunk filter on from Instagram. Or something. Uh, so, uh, yeah, perfect crime. Got away with it. Do you think Phil noticed, or was he just like, "Man, eh, that's fine. I'm 90. I've had a long life. I don't have to know everybody who's wishing me a happy birthday." I'm 99. <laughs> you got it wrong. I'm disowning you. Um, oh, I have another announcement. I want to do. Um, so I'm going to do on Black Friday. I'm going to do America's funniest IMGs. I'm going to save COVID or Jovid 19 for another time. Um, I'm going to do uh, America's funniest IMGs. IMGs are accidental uploads onto youtube and we've been collecting them i have a a bunch of melindas who are img miners and man we got a great collection so we're going to put together the greatest of this particular batch i think maybe we'll do a quarterly this will be a quarterly thing um and uh let me just uh get you stoked for it with this one it's a a prime time special then on this will be a prime time special black friday um uh, it's gonna be free it's gonna be on youtube and facebook and here's OMG0441. I forgot to write down who sent me this, uh, but this is a good one. Um, Will Lutz, we have the gonads, goons, suck the bag, and death. <laughs> and it's a gonad kind of day. And it's a gonad kind of day. <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing? Some kind of game with quarters? He wrote things on quarters that said death, gonads, yeah, bag. It's kind of uh, like doing a bag. cootie catcher thing, but with quarters. Allison sent that, by the way. I saw it. Just checked oh, that in you? our inbox. Okay. So yeah. thank you, thank Allison. You, Allison. Yeah. So that'll definitely be in the uh, the uh, a... America's Funniest IMGs. And and next Friday. Like, then. Seg- uh, no, not this Friday. The ne- following next Friday. Friday. Yeah. 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 Friday after this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that'll be cool. Great. Uh, that. <laughs> Uh, we also have Willie's Garage coming up tomorrow. It's uh, Willie's birthday. We'll be celebrating. And then Saturday, uh, for Saturday Morning Cartoons, my sister's coming on the show. We're going to watch a Qbert episode, a Qbert cartoon about Thanksgiving. And um, Yeah, we already taped it. It was super fun. We got yeah. to ask all the questions about uh, you, you and 
you know, her growing up and uh, <laughs> you, you, I don't know if people know this or not, but Nick and his sister didn't swear in front of each other, have, have never sworn in front of each other. They don't say swear words in front of each other. No. And so you might want to tune in to see if maybe they say their first swear word in front of each other. They might not. Yeah. But they might also say their first swear word in front of each other. Well, I'm just, I'm excited about that, but more importantly, that it's uh, about the true meaning of Thanksgiving as expressed through Qbert. So right. we're excited for that as well. Yep. Uh, and what else? What's going on for EP this week? Oh, here's, I had an idea for it. Um, so uh, Jay, Jay Nathan Couch sent the, a bunch of VHS, but he sent one of this home movie with the post-it note that says, bought at a Grafton, Wisconsin rummage sale. The woman I bought it from said she used to clean houses, and this was the filthiest house she ever had. Zooms on dirty toilets. Ooh. And I popped it in. I digitized it today. I didn't watch any of it. It looked good. So I'm thinking this is our first EP where we don't even watch the. We've never even seen a second of the video. I saw yeah. a second of it. But, you know, we haven't even watched it. We right. have no idea what it's going to be. It could be a dud. All right. But I think that's what we do. That'd be fun. Yeah. And by the way, you can join. You can uh, If you sign up for our Patreon at the link below you can um actually not only watch this week's uh bonus episode but we've been doing one a week since march and then one a month before that so there's like i think 50 hours of back ep modes where we just watched the whole versions of a bunch of videos a lot of times with the guests like we had rent a friend on to watch the weird video rent a friend from 1986 and we a bunch of stuff we watched john and johnny the home shopping with the home shopping host so uh, we invite you to join us on, on the EP mode episodes. Uh, oh, we, we have puzzles and they're going fast. Get your puzzles while you can. They're, uh, how, many, how many covers, Nick? I believe there's 96 different okay. covers on there. Why yeah, did you we go got... with 96 as a number? Because that was what fit into the dimensions of the puzzle. Okay, it would have, looked better. It would have sounded better if it said like over 100. I know covers, but well, it could have just had, it could have just been a, a rectangle, but then just a little, a few like stray videos off to the side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make next, it we'll do it for our next puzzle. Yeah, well, yeah, that's when you blew it. That's at foundfootagefest.com. You can get those. What do we want to go out on? Something Philly related? George, yeah. did you have something for us? Yeah, earlier we played the uh, action news theme for Philly, Philly's ABC affiliate channel six, and insanely, the song has lyrics which are sung over the closing credits. Oh, and we didn't play... hear the lyric version, right? Right. But they play this every single night at the end of the news? I believe so. It, it, I don't know if they still do, but they did when I was growing up all the time. Sweet. I, I think they still do. I bet it's peppy. I bet it's action-packed. It's both. All right. Well, we'll be right so, back right after that, everybody. That's all. That's it. If we had been prepared, we could have done better. Happy 40th, Matthew. Everybody's a puppet when they're dead. Believe in yourself and do anything. <laughs> Channel 6. This has been Action News, the most watched news program in the Delaware Valley. When you see news happening, call the Action News tip line by dialing News 6. In New Jersey, dial 966-6666 or call our regional news bureaus. When we return, Dr. Selmer will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That had done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? My nose is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Triodal. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Night, night.